All right, guys, hello again. It's October the 14th. I've dashed up after work. This might be my last chance for 14, sorry, what am I saying, 14? It's my last chance for nine holes after work. I haven't had a warm up, I haven't putted. I've just had three swings. I'm going with the driver because it's got the biggest head. Let's give it a go. Yeah, says it all really, doesn't it? I'll tell you what amazes me, that's 90% of the golfing world start their round of golf like this. No warm-up, no putting, opening shot, in trouble. Bit firm, gone off the back. Bit of a misread. Yeah, that'll do it, won't it? It was about 260 to the ditch, and I think now we're well into autumn. I think the ground's soft enough to hit driver. But the only way to find out is to hit driver. If you're going to hit it like a wedge, it's certainly soft enough to hit driver. But uh, what a difference not warming up makes compared to actually warming up. And you hit shots like that. I'm on my handicap, but only because I got a short game. So, uh, I haven't started so great, no warm up, etc. And when I go to Thailand, the first three times I went, I organized my golf with a company and they put me with other golfers and it was great because we had a minibus to ourselves and we could leave the hotel at the time we pleased get to the golf course at the time we pleased and spend some time actually warming up now the next three visits I played with golf bars and golf societies they go to the slightly cheaper courses which was disappointing and they cater for the guy who wants to get out the minibus, change his shoes and go straight on the tee. Now it doesn't matter to those guys if they're five over after four holes. Because they're probably on their handicap. You know, high handicappers, loads of shots. Doesn't matter if I go bogey, bogey, double bogey, bogey. Because they're on their handicap. But to me, it matters 
for me to play to my five or six, whatever it is, I need to warm up. Well, that was about 54 feet, so uh, not bad for an old man. No warm-up, so the hips are a bit stiff, they're not turning. I suppose that's one advantage about Thailand, because it's warm all day long. Uh, I mean, it's 25, 26 degrees at midnight, for instance. The body doesn't ache so much. Marginally better. Here's a question for you. When was the last time you saw a PGA Pro miss a fairway by five or six yards and he's behind a tree? Doesn't happen, does it? About 133, six iron. Now that is very pretty. Never ever complain about a tap-in. Tap-ins are great. So the problem with these golf bars is you don't get a warm-up. You just get tipped out of the minibus directly onto the first tee. So um, I'd seen these vans at golf courses, but Tiger Line Golf. So I looked them up and then I went to see them on my next trip. What I did is I booked the flight myself, booked the hotel myself, booked the taxi from the airport myself. And then my first day there, which is my sort of jet lag recovery day, which doesn't work. The first week I'm yawning around the golf course and awake all night. But I went up to there premises which wasn't far from my hotel only about a uh, par five from the hotel and they tell you where you're going and you can sign up for various days they go to two golf courses per day so you've got two choices per day but again it's tip you out in the minibus onto the first tee which I didn't really enjoy I want to warm up then perhaps I can start well instead of playing recovery shot after recovery shot after recovery shot. Great company, nice people. The Thai bit is the Thai wife, the Gur is the German husband, and he's a great bloke. But they just don't get you to the golf course on time for you to do anything. Plus, two cock-ups. One cock-up, they left two people behind who were eating after their round of golf because people don't want to buy beer at the golf course because it costs 40 pence more than beer in the bar. So they urge the minibus driver to go and they go and they leave people behind. Now, the second time it happened, six people went in one minibus, left two people behind. So in an eight seat seater minibus, we had 10 people coming back and it wasn't much fun. But they do have a rule after a round of golf, you shower and change. You can't go in the minibus dirty. And I played with them, and I played with this couple, and uh, man and wife, and after I'd shower and change and went into the bar, they were already there. They had their first beer, and they were eating. I thought, how on earth have they got that? Then I realized they were still in their golf clothes. Now, while you're out on the golf course sweating your bollocks off, and getting soaked all the way through every stitch of clothing till you can wring out your underwear. It doesn't really matter on the golf course, but when you're in the bar and then you get in the minibus, 
they were ripe. I mean, they were really ripe. Now somebody must have complained because when we got back to the uh, when we got back to the place and we were all putting our clubs in the locker because Tiger Line have got lockers, so you, you're not carrying your clubs backwards and forwards from the hotel. Someone must have complained because they got a dressing down by the boss saying, you will shower and you will change. It's only right, isn't it? Needs more practice. Well, one of the things with these lessons is I got so much going on in here and at the moment I just can't remember it all and you don't want to remember it all you want it to be autopilot but we'll get there We'll get there. So the last time out in Thailand was November 2018 for three and a half weeks. I played a lot with Tiger Line Golf. They're reasonably priced. They do exactly what it says on the tin. They get you to the golf course and you play some golf and they bring you back again. Most of the time. But I booked five rounds of golf at the best golf courses with Golf Asian. They pick you up from the hotel, got a vehicle to yourself, unless of course there's a group of you all staying in the same hotel, obviously they'll pick you, pick you all up in one vehicle. But they get you to the course, God this thing's heavy, this is much heavier than my phone. They get you to the course at least an hour before your tea time. So the caddy takes your clubs, you go get a locker, change your shoes, Come out the other side of the clubhouse. Caddy's waiting for you. You go get some ice, get some drinks. You go to the practice ground. So you introduce yourself, you get to know your caddy. She gets to know how far you hit the ball. Then you go to the chipping green, you do some chipping. As you know, I just use pitching wedge and sandwich. Because what I hate is, you know, you miss a green and you're on the cart path, you pull up at the side of the green and you say, uh, look, you see where your ball is and you think, that's a roller or that's an up and downer. So you say pitching or sandwich. You take your umbrella and you walk towards your ball. You get to your ball, you're looking at your lie, your caddy turns up, she's got your putter, your 60 degree, your sandwich, your 52, your pitching wedge, your 9 iron and your 8 iron. She's brought half the bag just so in case you change your mind and say oh I want me nine iron or whatever so they bring half the bag with them and it's I find it so sad that they have to do that so the the caddy getting to know that I take one club for rolling and one club for putting the ball in the air is is brilliant because uh, it makes it a lot easier for her, if nothing else. And with her watching you practice, she gets some idea of your yardage straight away. God, this is heavy. Much heavier than the... Uh... Oh well, that's life. 
Mind you, I've got this brand new tripod because the cheap ones, which have got a lot of plastic bits on them, the plastic bits break after about a year. So this is all metal and it's a damn sight heavier. That one really went on the wind. Good hit though. So this next trip, I've booked the whole lot with Golf Asian. So I know I can save money if I book the hotels myself, but I thought with the current situation, booking hotels might be a little awkward because I don't know when the hotels are gonna reopen. Hopefully the 1st of November. So I've put everything in Golf Asian's hand. Now, I've never been able to persuade other people to come with me, either the cost or the amount of time they've got to take off, or simply the wife says no. Um, so I don't know who I'm going to play with, but last time, 2018, you know, I, I played with some Japanese guys and we had a roaring time. It was absolutely fantastic. And, and that's what happens. You, you meet people you don't know what nationality they're going to be, you don't know what standard of golfer they're going to be, you don't know whether they're going to be quiet or chatty, extrovert, introvert, you have no idea who you're going to play with. But all of a sudden you make uh, firm friends, like the two guys I met from London about five or six years ago, and uh, we still meet up, we still try and arrange to be in town the same time of year so we can go for a drink and say hello. Brilliant isn't it? I think I fell in love with the line and forgot to hit it. So back in 2018, I did those five rounds with Golf Asian. And you have no idea who you're gonna end up playing with, which is part of the fun. That really is part of the fun. And I went to Siam Waterside, never played the course before, because it's, it's only a recently opened golf course, 2016, something like that. They've opened a new one since then, 2019, they opened Rolling Hills and I want to play that one when I go. So, get my caddy, go to the practice ground, hit a bunch of seven eyes, hit some hybrids, hit a few drivers, go do some chipping and putting. Tell the caddy that, you, that I only use these two clubs for chipping and so she's not carrying an armful of clubs round a green. And get onto the tee and it's I go to the starter and I say, who am I playing with? And there's seven Japanese guys. So four ball of Japanese are going out and I'm joining the three ball. And um, I do actually know a tiny, tiny amount of Japanese. I know enough to say hello and, and uh, one or two other minor words. So I was able to introduce myself and it was all very polite and all very formal and they were very serious golfers which suited me it allowed me to shut up and concentrate and i went round there I, I was playing off a handicap of six and i only dropped five shots so i played one under my handicap and um, we bowed after the round we didn't shake hands we bowed and said our goodbyes and gear back to the to the minibus get me get me a bag of clothes, shower, change, and then in the bar, they're at the next table. 
and they're obviously talking about me and um, one of them manages to say good golfer and they're all sort of like nodding and being appreciative and um, there's no real conversation there's one guy who can speak some decent English but he's he's not into actually talking to me he's he's a little embarrassed about his English um, so there was no conversation there so back to the hotel have a little snooze try and catch up on the old jet lag and I go out about half past seven in the evening so I go to the bar over the road I have a couple of drinks and bear in mind I don't drink much so a couple of drinks is, is more than enough for me. So I had a couple of drinks. I thought, where am I going to eat tonight? Well, there's this fish restaurant, which I absolutely love. I love the sea bass. So it's across town to this fish restaurant. Get shown to the table. Who's on the next table? The seven Japanese guys who I played golf with. And they've got everything. I mean, I'm just having sea bass and rice, for goodness sake. They've got a table full of stuff. And they've got sake on a little burner. You know, they... It, it's drink it's drunk hot well, they recognize me as me as well as me recognizing them and after I've eaten the guy who's speaking who can speak English is, is a little bit looser well, I get invited over to the table and needless to say the evening finished with me being shit-faced <laughs> what an evening this is the fantastic thing about international travel you have no idea who you're gonna play golf with so Part of me wants the lads to come with me and part of me is happy that they don't because if it was just four lads, we'd spend all our time together and probably get on each other's nerves. But when you're playing golf and you're playing with a different group of people every day, then you've potentially got a different group of people to have dinner with in the evening. I better shut up and actually play some golf. I've only hit it 200, but off that upslope it does go exceptionally high with an open face on your driver. A little bit knifey, but it stopped absolutely dead. <laughs> 